Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and I have a very good one for you today because there are more bank closures. There are more shenanigans with banks shutting down accounts, cutting credit lines, limiting transactions, and doing things that are going to damage each and every one of us. And if you don't think that this can happen to you, you're kidding yourself. But uh, before I get into it, please take a second, hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and share this with all your friends and colleagues. I am in Dana Point, California. Uh, that right next to me is the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. I am in the big grass park that overlooks the ocean, which is very cool, free to come down here. You gotta pay for parking, but you come down to the beach, you've got basketball courts and uh, people fly their kites on this hill on the weekend. And this hill is really tall. People get cardboard and slide down until, until they tell them to stop. And then they do it again and again and again. So I'm not recommending you do that, but if you do film it and make sure you film it landscape mode so that you get a good quality video. Anyways, uh, you're starting to see banks shut down more and more lines of credit. Uh, and it's happening all over the country and all over the world. Uh, I have people that send me things from outside the country, and this should concern each and every one of you. Tesco Bank out of the UK just announced, T-E-S-C-O, Tesco Bank, just announced that if you have a regular checking account or bank account, they're closing all the accounts in November. November, at the end of November, November 13th, I think is the date, but by the end of the month, they will have no more checking accounts. So you need to go out and get yourself a new checking account immediately if you are a Tesco customer. Now you can say, Dan, how does it affect us here in the United States? It's, it's not a big deal. This could happen here overnight. Uh, I was in a bank today asking the manager questions and whoa, 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 you're asking way too many questions about things. We haven't heard any things. Are you guys limiting transactions? Yes, we're limiting transactions. And we don't want people to take out much cash. We want them to try to get cashier's checks. So again, it should concern you guys. If you're banking with Wells Fargo, you should be concerned about what you uh, have inside the bank and what you can and cannot take out of the bank, okay? so. Tesco Bank is a huge bank. They've got insurance, they've got uh, grocery store chains. They're a very, very large company, but they diversified into checking. Now they're gonna maintain their credit cards, they're gonna maintain credit lines and things like that, but they're getting rid of checking accounts. So that should be a concern for you guys because this could be trouble coming here. Now, I have a woman named Selma, who is a subscriber, who wrote me out of Spain. And Spain is limiting cash transactions right now. This should freak every single one of you out because no transaction in, in euros can be over 1,000 euros right now in cash in Spain. That's crazy, guys. Uh, I, I got a question for you. What if you need to go buy a car? What if you need to go buy equipment and the vendor says cash only? And like I said, well, what if you have five 1,000 transactions? You can't do that. They will fine you if you go out and have multiple transactions over a thousand dollars a piece. So how do you solve this problem? I don't know. By the way, that's the Pacific Ocean behind me, which is nice and big. Um, but what do you guys do with this stuff? So this is a concern. It's happening worldwide right now, and it's gonna come to a city near you. Now, you know, all oh, you guys, oh, everything's great here, Dan. It's great in Davenport, Iowa. Idaho's fantastic. You know, Texas is great, Florida's great, it's all fantastic. But guys, this is a problem. You know, Jerome Powell's little story time about how great everything was is awful. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are talking about that. And in this video, we're gonna share some of the experts and some of the names over Dan that you've heard of that are recommending that things are not as good as they say they are. So get yourself prepared. If you have too much money in the bank, I have a business colleague who sold her business and I told her, hey, if you have over 250 grand in one account, you're a fool right now. And uh, conversation got real quiet. And I said, you need to have multiple accounts right now. Now, that's a heck of a problem to have, okay? I don't have that problem. I'm sure you don't have that problem. But she's got over 250 grand in multiple accounts in, in one account. So. If you think that these banks could not flip a switch and close and make it incredibly difficult for you to get your money, you're kidding yourself. So again, this is 
let me spin this around. This is so beautiful where I'm at. Look at these houses here. You know, million dollar listing, Josh Altman. He sold some of the land that was just up the street. You've seen these on TV, but this is just a great place. But the cool thing, guys, this is free. Come down here, have a picnic with your family and hang out and, and just have a beautiful place to walk, exercise. And on this summer day, you know, you got the influencers out here doing their yoga and filming it, uh, which is nice to see. I like watching that. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> anyways, um, let's go back to that. We'll get into the next story in a second. Now here's the walkway down to the beach and that up on top of the hill is the Ritz Carlton. The cool thing about this is that you share the beach with the Ritz Carlton. It's a public beach here in California. So everybody out here is not staying at that hotel, but you can use the same beach as the Ritz Carlton, which is super cool. So just beautiful, all the kids out there in the water, everybody having a great time. Absolutely just a fantastic place to visit, walk around and check out. Now Peter Schiff just came out after the Fed meeting and Peter Schiff said that it's game over and uh, the economy is in huge, huge trouble. The Fed knows it and the Fed is trying not to admit that we're in a huge bubble and anything that could, that could possibly prick this bubble could destroy the economy. He also said something that's great is that the Fed's worried about doing anything. If they do anything drastic right now, it could absolutely accelerate the collapse. So he says a collapse is coming he said, you know, they're trying to talk about how good the economy is on how people are spending money. Well, that's not how you measure an economy, according to Peter Schiff. You measure an economy by what the country produces. And we produce nothing right now. We produce debt. We produce haircuts, coffee, you know, that's it, guys. I mean, we, you know, we're a service economy that's not making anything. And if you look at things like American Airlines and Southwest, we just talked about that, about how if they didn't have the government handout money in there, they'd be upside down in their balance sheet. So Peter Schiff sees this, sees this as a real problem and that this is going to end terribly and that we need to accept our fate and get ready for this. So, you know, real estate's inflated, everything's sky high right now, and we're just supposed to go along with it like this is normal. So, uh, it's not, it's crazy. So share your thoughts, guys. I wanna know if you think Peter Schiff's out of his mind. Uh, again, I always love when you get people that are really well respected and you quote him and, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an idiot. Okay, well, Peter Schiff, I'm gonna to listen to. He also thinks that inflation is above 13%, which I still think is conservative. I think it's above 16%. But again, people that are getting more money from their, uh, uh, from their uh, Social Security, it's not enough. If they get the 6%, they're upside down. Could be 7% right now. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out. And uh, I want your thoughts on all this stuff. So please share it. Do you think Peter shifts out of his mind? Do you think things are as bad as they say they are? Because I surely do. You know, real estate is at an all-time high. And the numbers are starting to collapse. Those numbers are starting to tank. People are starting to cancel escrows. Uh, you know, the demanding sellers that were saying, we're not gonna fix the roof, we're not gonna do this, we're not gonna do that, are getting clobbered and the houses are back on the market. So good luck to those people. Share your thoughts, guys. As you overlook this beautiful beach, it's very cool that there's walkways that lead up to the Ritz-Carlton. And then you've got places like this where you can sit down and relax and just take a look at the ocean. Now, there were 400,000 people that filed first time unemployment job claims today. That's what was reported for last week. Uh, the week before, those numbers were revised up as well. You guys, this is not good right now. So you can tell me about how the economy's growing, everything's fantastic. You know, the rent moratorium's going to end. Uh, President Biden has just said he wants to extend the rent moratorium. You can't do it without Congress. And with the problem that pesky Supreme Court with them saying that everything ends this weekend. So uh, it's over guys. If you have not 
made arrangements yet, you need to make arrangements immediately. The rent moratorium money is stuck in bureaucracy land. Now, speaking of bureaucracy, uh, Bitcoin is struggling to hit above 40 grand again. Okay, maybe it's hit above it, but it's struggling to get above there and go back to its all-time highs. Now, that being said, the new infrastructure bill, they want to tax Bitcoin. So maybe it's real, maybe it's not, but for you guys that think that you're going to not have tax on Bitcoin transactions, you're kidding yourself. They started with a minimum, if you have $10,000 in transactions, you're gonna pay a tax on that. You're gonna to have to report each transaction. So for you guys that have done this for illegal activity or to hide income or keep it from your spouse or anything fun like that, you're gonna have a real problem coming because the feds wanna put this in with the infrastructure bill. And this came out of the blue and uh, either they're gonna do it or they're not gonna do it. But the conversation's out there, but the conversation right now is let's tax Bitcoin. So share your thoughts on this, guys. You think they're gonna tax Bitcoin? You think they're gonna extend the rent moratorium? You think that uh, everybody's gonna live rent free? I, I have people that write me and say, universal basic, uh, basic income is going to happen. In May, they were telling me August 1st, they were all gonna get a check for two to $3,000 a month. Now, they're telling me it's September 1st. Some people are saying October 1st. Well, they keep kicking the can down the road, uh, but this is not gonna happen, guys. It's time to get a real job. It's time to go work again and sell something. So, you know, share your thoughts on this, guys, because I'm absolutely curious as to what you guys think about this. Isn't this peaceful, though, guys? Look, I'm the only one by myself at this at this place. And as you look over the, just crazy, man. This is just absolutely beautiful. So, find a peaceful spot. I'm telling you, I do this all the time. It's incredibly productive. I bring out my notepad, write things down. It is absolutely fantastic um, to get yourself a peaceful spot that you can walk around at, take notes, clear your head, plot your day, plot your life. Try it. It'll, it'll totally work. It'll change everything that you do. So this is the back staircase to the Ritz-Carlton that leads up to the hotel. So let's go check it out. Walking through this place, here's the, the main restaurant. And uh, one thing that I get a kick out of is it reminds me of a story about this place. And I uh, can't wait to share it with you. But uh, you can see the Ritz-Carlton restaurant. Gonna go have a seat. Did you ever work for someone that you thought had it in for you? I used to hear this from friends and colleagues and people in business and thought, oh, this guy's an idiot. This guy's absolutely crazy. He's just paranoid. He's just a terrible employee. Well, I worked for someone and that person constantly reminded me that they were my boss, constantly was threatened by every suggestion that I made. And this hotel reminds me of a great story and that was, there was a trade show here. And uh, the person that I worked for sabotaged the trade show so that I didn't have signage for the event. So I was gonna be embarrassed, I was gonna show up here and not have signage for my event. Now, I had a feeling about a week and a half before because she started doing really, really bad things to me. And, uh, I complained to her about it, I complained to her boss about it, nothing was done. So I went out on my own dime as an employee for this company and made a complete set of signage. So I'd have them in my car in case anything ever happened and I had to go to a trade show and something happened with shipping or something like that. Well, sure enough, I get to this trade show, I, oh, pardon me, I get to her house to pick up the trade show uh, uh, equipment and she says, oh, I'm sorry, I just didn't get it made in time guess you're gonna be in real trouble when you get there. So she did this to my face and I just said, okay, have a nice day. Well, I knew at that second that I was gonna leave this company, okay? That's the first thing. So I went to the trade show, pulled the signs that I had made out of the trunk, had a great event, killed it, slayed it, just totally, totally, totally killed it. But when I went, her boss called me and could sense my hostility on the phone and I told her the story and she, oh, come on, just, just fight through it. She's temperamental. Uh, she does things, she means well, but she does quirky things. Well, sabotaging the company is not quirky. So that being said, she said, why don't you go have lunch at the restaurant? Clear your head, have something nice and have a nice meal. 
I said, okay, sounds good, but this place is really expensive. I mean, it, this place is super expensive. Oh, just get a hamburger, get something nice, you know, and, and just eat. So I went to that restaurant that we just walked by and had a $36 hamburger. Oh, God, it felt so good. I had a $12 iced tea that day. I had cheese on my burger and I threw on bacon. That was $5 for bacon to be put on the, uh, the hamburger. My lunch that day was $76. And I'm telling you, I never felt so good in my life turning an expense receipt in as I did that one. Because I knew that uh, they were gonna flip out, which they did. But hey, you told me to go have lunch there. I could have had the pheasant. The pheasant was 118 bucks, but you know, whatever. I got a hamburger instead. So, have you guys ever had a boss do anything to you that was bad? Come on, share the stories. Anybody ever had it in for you? Okay, now, me being a business owner and then going to work for somebody, you know, I, I've been through the, around the block. I've seen things. Let me suggest something. So it didn't work out. I left. My contract expired and I moved on. Thank God. And, um, you know, share your thoughts, guys, because I'm dying to know if you've ever had an experience like that. This place is incredibly nice. And uh, it even has offices that you can sit down in. Have a private area for your phone, have a phone call, use the computer, print something out, your boarding pass, whatever. But this place is just absolutely beautiful. And uh, you can just see how opulent it is. It's got the fire going on in the middle of the day, but just absolutely beautiful. We've got a steakhouse that's open at night. They've got the bar that's open in the evening. But again, this place is just stunning and beautiful. And uh, if you want to come here, you can come here and it's 35 bucks to park your car. <laughs> a friend of mine, John, taught me a trick that if you go to the little tiny takeout place there and buy a soda for five bucks, you can park your car for free. So they'll give you three, four or five hours, something like that. Anyways, place is fantastic. But the next story is from Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson was just in the movie Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson is suing Disney over her contract where they just released the movie on Disney Plus. And um, I have a little bit of experience with this. As a former screenwriter, um, when I had my first deal, okay, I'll tell you guys a quick little story. I was sitting in this lawyer's office and uh, he was talking about credit, the size of the words, how big your credit. I'm like, who cares about that, man? Give me my money. I want the check. And he, he laughed. And he slammed his notebook shut. He said, as soon as they mess with you in any way, shape, or form, you're going to care about everything that's in this contract. And <laughs> then I had a contract that went south, and they didn't want to pay me. They didn't want to uh, put my name on certain things and do it the way that they were supposed to. And uh, you're right. I'm glad I had a contract. So Scarlett Johansson, who is 10,000 times bigger than I was ever, maybe a million times bigger, let's just put it that way, um, had Black Widow. Her contract stated that Black Widow was supposed to be released theatrically. So they released it on Disney Plus at the same time as they did in the theaters. And it was 30 or 35 bucks for the weekend to watch Black Widow, which, you know, if you're going to take a family, it's a deal. But movies like this were never intended to be watched in your house. They're great to watch a second time. If you can't make it to the theater, they're great to watch inside of, uh, inside your house. But you know, needless to say, this thing was supposed to be a theatrical release. It was delayed a year, and she's suing because she says that they used uh, they used Black Widow to build up the Disney Plus base and not pay her. So she's suing for a substantial amount of money. The story will be downstairs in the video description. Uh, take a look at it because it, it's a pretty interesting story. And uh, what do you guys think? Did you guys see Black Widow? Uh, my daughter saw it, loved it, thought it was great. I had other people that saw it and uh, uh, thought it was just marginal. But uh, share your thoughts, guys. I want to know what you think of that. I know you're, a lot of people are saying, movies are dead. I don't see movies anymore. But did you see it? Did you like it? Do you think she has standing in her lawsuit? That's what I want to know. I'm going to close this video out with two stories regarding uh, financial institutions closing accounts. The first one is the app called Chime. And Chime was set up as out alternative banking. Check out how opulent this place is. Look at this, all these people lining up at the, uh, at the uh, valet. 
but uh, Chime was set up as an alternative banking solution for many people. Uh, they had a valuation over $10 billion, raised a bunch of money. They signed up as many as 12 million customers as of 2020. And with people getting their stimulus checks, hey, sign up for Chime. It's a great place to deposit your stimulus check. And what people were starting to see is that Chime started to close accounts down if they said these were questionable deposits. Now, what they did was if a guy had 500 bucks in his account and all of a sudden he got a $10,000 stimulus check, they said, ooh, this is questionable. Uh, and they flagged it and held the money. Now, they just didn't release it. They held the money. So this is a real problem. They had thousands of complaints to all the different banking institutions and the CPFB and all these different places that you can complain to about banking and the Better Business Bureau and all these other shenanigans that they complain to. Only problem was they're not a bank, so they don't have to follow the regular banking regulatory rules. So, I mean, guys, again, if you don't think that this can happen with your bank, you're kidding yourself. If you're using these alternative banks, Current and M1 and all these other things, like that, you know, get yourself ready because watch how much money you have in accounts like that because it could be a real problem. Isn't this beautiful, guys? Look at this place. Hanging out. Anyways, very nice. So, uh, the other thing is during the PPP days, I had people that would write to me that would get PPP loans. And because they used accounts like Chime and other things like that, they use it as their business account. They're a small company. They would pay for things with basically a debit card. They wouldn't have checks. They would pay their vendors that way. They would buy materials, buy supplies that way. Well, the worst one was a woman that had an $8,400 PPP loan that they rejected. Okay, Chime said, oh, this is a suspicious deposit. And of course, they don't have a customer service phone number, so she had to do it all via email and via the chat bot and the chat bot, you know, doesn't understand English and doesn't understand full sentences because it's a computer. So the AI computer in this thing uh, rejected it. Only problem was this lady went out and she paid vendors with this. She had an account that she could write checks on and wrote all these checks to different vendors and then had bounced checks all over town. Not only does she have almost $2,000 in fees, but she lost relationships with all these vendors that thought she was making it up about the PPP loan and having to explain it. Well, if you got this money, why didn't they put it in your account? Which is horrible and it was awful. So get ready, okay? Because, oh Dan, I'm a good customer with my bank and they like me. You're a fool if you think that they will not do this to you because they will do this to you and you need to be ready for this. So hope you guys enjoyed today onward and upward. Please don't forget to the like button, the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and family members and colleagues and everybody else. Don't forget to join our email list because we got a bunch of cool announcements coming very shortly. Plus, uh, please, uh, if you'd like to join Patreon, we've got a great Patreon group uh, that you can be part of. And uh, we've got an email list. What else? I think I repeated that already. Anyways, good luck to each and every one of you guys. I'll see you very soon.